Adolf Hitler, the notorious dictator who cast a shadow over the world during the turbulent times of World War II. In the midst of history's deadliest conflicts, he became the target of 42 assassination attempts. In this video, we will delve into the most courageous stories of those who dared to challenge his rule. When Hitler first started his political career, a citizen saw him speak and was like, Oh shit, he will bring about Germany's downfall. I gotta stop him. So he mixed something together and somehow managed to get this mixture into the food of Hitler and his staff members when they ate at the Kaiserhof Hotel in Berlin. They became seriously ill, but Hitler was less affected, probably because of his vegetarian diet. In February 1932, there was this German politician named Ludwig Asner. He sent Hitler a poisoned letter all the way from France. Unfortunately, someone who knew Asner warned Hitler, and they managed to intercept the letter before anything happened. This is Beppo Romer. He was part of the Freikorps, and he was seriously pissed about the Night of the Long Knives, where Hitler's potential rivals got wiped out. So, Beppo promised to take out Hitler as payback. He did some serious homework, figured out Hitler's daily routine and all that jazz, trying to find the perfect moment to strike. But before he could finalize his plan, he got snitched onto the Gestapo. Poor Beppo ended up locked up in Dachau until 1939. In 1934, there was this dude named Dr. Helmut Milius. Big shot in the radical middle class party, you know? He got about 160 guys to sneak into the SS, trying to dig up dirt on Hitler's moves. The Gestapo caught wind of their plan real quick, and bam, they nabbed those guys. But here's the twist. Milius had some heavy hitters like Field Marshal Eric von Manstein in his corner, and they managed to keep him out of cuffs. Lieutenant Colonel Noel Mason McFarlane, the military attaché over at the British Embassy in Berlin, had this gut feeling about Hitler, you know? He was seriously suspicious. So, he cooked up this wild idea. Imagine taking out Hitler with a sniper rifle shot from his own drawing room, overlooking the spot where Hitler did his birthday parade salute thing. But when Mason McFarlane pitched this plan to his bosses, they shut it down. Lord Halifax, the big shot British Foreign Secretary, was like, Nah, we're not at that point yet. Assassination isn't our go-to move. Let's stick to diplomacy. Some big shots in the German foreign office were getting real antsy about Hitler. They cooked up this plan, spreading a letter around, saying stuff like, pledging loyalty to Hitler doesn't mean squat anymore since he's ruining Germany, and that it's time to do something about it. Their scheme never got off the ground, and the world just kept on marching toward that big global war. By 1936, Hitler had stirred up hatred of Jews in much of Germany, and German Jew Helmut Hirsch, member of the Strasserist Black Front, was tasked with planting two suitcases filled with explosives at the Nazi party headquarters in Nuremberg. The plot was revealed to the Gestapo by a double agent, and Hirsch was executed by beheading. Let's pause this video real quick. Do you know why he is so sad? Because you haven't subscribed yet, so do that to make him happy. Even folks who've lost it mentally wanted Hitler gone. Take Josef Thomas, for instance, a guy dealing with some serious mental issues. November 1937, he travels all the way to Berlin with one goal in mind killing Hitler. However, Thomas also had beef with Hermann Göring, the head of the Nazi Air Force, and planned to assassinate both on the same day. But the cops caught wind of his plan, setting an end to this assassination attempt. Back in 1938, a group of high-ranking German army officers, led by General Major Hans Oster, hatched a plan to overthrow Hitler if he initiated war against Czechoslovakia. Their audacious scheme involved storming the Reich Chancellery, arresting or assassinating Hitler, and restoring Wilhelm II as emperor. However, their plot was abandoned when Britain and France unexpectedly agreed to the German annexation of Sudetenland, averting the immediate threat of war. Little did they know, the Allies inadvertently spared Hitler's life, at least for the time being. In a daring bid to assassinate Hitler, Swiss theology student Maurice Baveau disguised himself as a reporter, attempting to shoot Hitler during a parade. His view was obstructed by the crowd, forcing him to abandon the plan. Later, he tried to meet Hitler in Munich, but failed. Bavoud's relentless pursuit ultimately led to his capture by the Gestapo. He was executed by guillotine at Berlin's Plötzensee prison in May 1941. Hitler's luck defied belief during World War I, when he narrowly escaped an explosion that hit the exact spot he had been moments before. This streak of explosive luck persisted into his life, notably in October 1939. During a victory parade in Warsaw, after Hitler's conquest of Poland, General Michał Karaszewicz Tokarzewski and some members of the Polish army devised a plan to obliterate Hitler with explosives placed beneath his parade route. Astonishingly, Hitler's parade was diverted at the last minute, sparing him from the plant 
planted TNT buried just beneath his path. Hitler's brush with death came perilously close yet again, just a month after a near miss. German carpenter Georg Elzer meticulously planned a bomb inside a beer hall, time to explode during Hitler's annual speech in Munich. But Hitler abruptly cut his speech short, leaving the bomb to detonate, killing eight and injuring 62. Elzer's capture led to a Gestapo crackdown, making explosives scarce and forcing the cancellation of multiple other assassination attempts. In 1943, a group of German generals devised a plan to arrest or kill Hitler during his visit to a military detachment in Ukraine. General Hyacinth Graf Strachwitz was tasked with surrounding Hitler and his escorts with tanks, prepared to resort to lethal force if necessary. However, Hitler's visit was unexpectedly cancelled at the last moment, once again sparing him from a carefully orchestrated plot. On March 13, 1943, Hitler narrowly escaped three assassination attempts. First, officers planned to kill him during his drive from the airport to a local army headquarters, but the heavy SS escort forced cancellation. Another plot during lunch was thwarted when Hitler failed to appear. In a desperate move, a bomb disguised as liquor bottles was placed on his airplane. Set to detonate over Poland, extreme temperatures iced the plane's hold, causing the bomb's fuse to fail, sparing Hitler once more. German officer Rudolf Christoph Freiherr von Gerstorff was determined to eliminate Hitler, even at the cost of his own life. During a visit to a Berlin armory, Gerstorff packed his coat pockets with time-delayed explosives, intending to hug Hitler to ensure his death. However, Hitler swiftly toured the exhibition, giving Gerstorff no opportunity. Rushing to a bathroom, Gerstorff disarmed the explosives just in time. An Allied air raid inadvertently spared Hitler's life. Major Axel von dem Busche, handpicked to model the army's new uniform for Hitler, planned to carry out a suicide bombing during the private viewing. Concealing a mine in his backpack, he aimed to detonate it while embracing Hitler. However, their meeting never took place as the rail car, carrying the new uniforms, was destroyed in an Allied air raid on Berlin, cancelling the viewing and saving Hitler's life. In March 1944, a bold assassination plan unfolded at Hitler's Berghof retreat. Some German resistance members aimed to assassinate Hitler during a briefing. Armed with a concealed pistol, Breitenbach planned to shoot Hitler in the head, but SS guards, under strict orders, prevented them from entering the conference room. In the days of 1944, as Germany's defeat was certain, a group of military officers hatched Operation Valkyrie, a plan to assassinate Hitler and end the war. Klaus von Stauffenberg, a key conspirator, meticulously prepared a bomb hidden inside a briefcase, intending to deploy it during a meeting where Hitler and his military advisors gathered. Stauffenberg placed the briefcase beside Hitler, but Colonel Heinz Brandt unknowingly nudged it behind a table leg, altering its impact. When the bomb detonated, it caused chaos, killing several and injuring many. Astonishingly, Hitler survived with minor injuries. In the end, Hitler was the only person who could kill himself.